Hi, this is Mo Volans for Tuts Plus, And in this video, I'm gonna be taking a look at advanced or creative CV routing in Reason. Now, if you're a Reason user, you've probably used the CV system to some extent, and you've probably used it for some pretty simple routing. If I flip the rack, and I'm just using the tab key to do that, you'll see that there's really two different kinds of cabling in Reason. You've got the thicker cables. These tend to be audio, so, you know, our audio output from this instrument going into a mixer object is pretty pretty simple. But then if you look, you've got these smaller um, connectors as well. And these are the CV uh, controlled voltage uh, connections. And obviously with it being a digital system and it being, you know, completely in the box, there is no controlled voltage going around. It's not an analog signal, but it mimics an analog signal, an analog CV system, uh, the sort of thing you'd find on older instruments. So really what it's used for is to convey data and triggering and uh, LFOs and um, modulators. So anywhere you see this smaller plug, it means that you're able to use it either to input or output modulation data. So this works, like I say, in a very similar way to sort of older analog synths. Um, it's perhaps a bit more advanced and uh, it's probably more flexible, to be honest with you, and very easy to uh, configure right inside Reason. So I've sort of connected just one simple connection, uh, one simple modulation, uh, so you can sort of see it in action. And then I'm going to show you how we can maybe think outside of these simple connections and start to use it in a more interesting way. So I've got a, um, I'll tell you what, I'll turn it down currently so you can hear it in its dry state. I've got a really simple synth loop um, in a Rex, Rex format and it's nothing special just a straight up loop and we can filter it right here inside the doc talk to rex now of course the octorex has got its own lfo but let's say, for argument's sake, I was using this LFO to change the panning. Let's get some slow auto pan going on. Great, so let's say that LFO's tied up. And we want to now modulate the frequency. Now, of course, I could use automation, but maybe I want to use a specific kind of modulation. I, I want to use a specific kind of LFO. So let's go ahead and use an LFO from another synth. And obviously, in most DAWs, this isn't really possible, but using the CV system, it is. So I'm on the back of the subtractor now, and I've just rooted LFO1. You can see it says modulation output. These are all our inputs, and we'll get into those in a minute. But our modulation output, there's a few of them. So we've got mod envelope, filter envelope, and LFO1. So let's look at those. Filter envelope, mod envelope, and LFO1. So any three of these things can be used as an output to go elsewhere in the Reason system. And I've just plugged it in. Let's just unplug it. And I've just gone straight to filter cutoff. And this is the modulation input area, OK? Again, the output area on it's a lot smaller but we've got a decent amount of um, choices here when it comes to the modulation input. Now I'm going to turn that up, and you can probably hear that already, but if I turn some resonance up and... Now the amount here in the LFO one's not going to do anything because we've got an amount right here. So I'll turn that down a bit and turn it. So you can really hear that. And it's synced. Our speed is at 4.4. Four. And we've got a, a ramped, upward ramped saw wave. Let's put it on a sine wave. Okay, so that's a good example of a nice, simple modulation, just a single modulation. But but let's say we want to do something a bit different, and we want to start modulating some effects parameters. And again, this is not something that you could do elsewhere. But maybe I want to use the same LFO from the subtractor to modulate, 
Well, let's see what we've got. We've got CVM. We can change the damping or the decay of the reverb. That'll be pretty cool. And the damage control of this uh, Scream 4. I'm going to turn these down to start with. Uh, but obviously, this LFO is tied up. We could use something else here, or we could use one of the outputs uh, from the the LFO, maybe from the Dr. Octorex. But let's say I want to use this specific one. Now, we can split and merge uh, CV signals, but we have to use the uh, CV merger and splitter called the Spider. And I've just made one of those there. I'll just flip it. It's very simple on the front. There's a little diagram to sort of show you how it works. Um, if we go into one of these areas, we've got two splitters internally in the Spider. Uh, go in here, we've got four outputs, and one of them's inverted. But you can then you can make another one if you want. So you could go ahead and go to utilities. And make another merger and splitter and you can they automatically join up but you can essentially and then have another two and then make more and more and you can basically split it into as many as you want right so it doesn't degrade or change as it goes it's uh, perfectly replicated i'm just going to get rid of that last one and let's put the lfo let's take it from the filter cutoff and let's put it into one of the splitter circuits now we can take one of these and put it into the filter cutoff. So that will give us the same um, routing as we had before. Now we can take another split, take it into our decay that we decided to modulate, and another split and take it into our damage control. Okay, so now we've got three versions of the original LFO, uh, all going to different locations. And now if we play this back, Turn the decay down, maybe. And let's turn that damage control up and the decay up. Let's slow it down some. So you can see we get some really interesting effects and this is really just scratching the surface because of course you can merge the signals using the CV merger splitter and you can split them into multiple different places and we don't just have to have you know one going to different places we can maybe put two or three different LFOs merge going into another and then split those into several different devices. So really the key to starting to use your CV connections in reason in a more creative manner is using these merger splitters. Um, and also there's an audio one as well, which is really cool. Um, if you go to the same place, if you go to utilities and you go to the spider audio merger and splitter, it's basically the same thing for audio. But I would suggest getting right into these if you like your CV routing and reason. Um, hopefully this has given you some food for thought and uh, you can start to really create your own um, interesting routings uh, in your own projects. So as always, comments are welcome. If you want to see some more Reason tutorials, if you're a big Reason user and this is useful to you, please let me know and I'll try and add more of them to the list. Um, otherwise, just let me know what you want to see and I'll try and add it uh, to my to-do list. Uh, but for now, I'll say bye and thanks for watching.